Hey guys, welcome back or welcome for the first time. If you're just new here, welcome. I'm Michelle, this is Gio. And we are Hi, reptile guys. lovers. And so today we have been asked quite a few things, um, quite a few times from some of our watchers and our viewers. Hey, let us know why are dubia roaches really healthy for our reptiles, our amphibians, and our insectivores. So that is what we're gonna be talking about right. today. That's right, we're gonna be discussing some fun facts uh, about the Dubia. We're gonna discuss the, their life cycle, uh, as well as some of the details of their anatomy. We're also gonna discuss their uh, nutritional value, uh, as well as many reasons why these guys are such popu popular feeder insects, and also the pros and cons of breeding these guys in captivity. Awesome, so stick around. I wanna give you a chance right now. Can you like this video? So it boosts us up in the algorithm on YouTube. And can you subscribe if you have not yet? We love all of our subscribers. And our goal here on this channel is just to do some educational videos. We also have a Dubia roach colony, a Discoid roach colony, and now we're getting into millworms. And, and superworms. Superworms. So you can find us if you're in need of feeders at MightyDubiaFeeders.com. All right, stick around, let's do this. Let's do it. Okay guys, we're gonna talk about the Dubia Roach. I'm gonna let you know some different names that the Dubia Roach goes by all around the world. They actually don't call them Dubia. The official name for the Dubia Roach is the Blaptica Dubia. And they're actually known by three different names. Yep. So one of them is the Orange Spotted Roach, the Guyana or Guyana Spotted Roach, and the Argentinian Wood Roach. Why don't you tell them about these really cool Dubia roaches, all about their life cycle, so they know if they're gonna get into breeding or mm -hmm. having them longer than just a feeder to their animals, how long they're gonna stick around in their house yeah, or garage for. Sure, for. Yeah. So on, on average, the, these guys live about a year and a half to two years, with the females living uh, much longer than the, than the males. Uh, basically, any roach that is not has not reached adulthood is considered a nymph. So okay, guys, so I'm going to have Gio here tell you guys, because we're talking about dubia roach sizes, so why don't you explain to everybody the sizes that we have on our um, website that are available, so that way you guys know, and why don't you show them some of ours? Sure, yeah. So we uh, we carry the small, so I'll, I'll show you an example of a small. Small is about, uh, about a quarter inch to three-eighths inch. Let me find one here. We got a little bucket of roaches right here that we're uh, digging through. I don't know if it's in the shot. A bucket of roaches. There we go. Get them. They'll move. So that one is a small. And there you go. There you we can go. see that. They come in one fourth to three eighths of an inch. That's right. And those are good for your small insectivores. Um, Maybe your gecko, little small geckos or something like that, right, That's Gio? Right. Yeah. Or newborn bearded dragons because uh, rule of thumb is you don't want to feed your, your reptiles anything that is bigger than the width of their eyes because they can get impacted and that actually can be fatal. So you want to make sure you don't give too big of roaches or worms or whatever kind of feeders you give to your um your different friends, yeah. the medium one, yeah, right? Yeah, this, this is the next size. This is gonna be a medium. These guys range for about, from like half an inch to about five eighths inch, and you can see they're just like, and these are made all around. They're... And you guys, like honestly, like I don't mind holding here. Look at me, I'm so brave. You wanna come here to me? I'm all sweaty, it's so hot. We're sitting in our garage, and we're trying to do this hey, in, in go, Texas. Oh, he's so fast, uh-oh, okay. We're sitting in our garage in Houston, Texas area, and it is already in, we're in the end of March and it's already like 85 degrees. degrees outside. It's so hot and I'm sweating. But anyway, so ladies out there, these are not intimidating to hold. I say that with not a great assault because for real, I've always been very scared of bugs. My parents, if you've watched any of our other videos, you know that my parents own their own pest control uh, business. And um, so my dad would come home with all kinds of nasty bugs and creatures and I was always terrified and freaked out. But I actually have grown to really be comfortable with dubia roaches, having them even in my house. And we'll go over some of the reasons why I don't mind as a woman having them in my house and feeding them to our reptiles as feeders. 
um, and, and he'll go over some of those reasons why yeah. with the anatomy. Yeah, exactly. But, yeah, so Let me show you the, the next size here. So the next size is going to be a large. It's going to be three quarters to an inch. And this guy, I'm going to hold them differently because he's not going to want to just oh, sit yeah, on my finger. Been, I won't hold these because these are large. Come here, little guy. And even Gio recently. That's a large right there. Don't worry, I won't, I won't put it in your hair. Okay, yeah, don't put that near me. <laughs> That's the there large. he is. He's so cool, though. Actually, you recently just started holding them without yeah, a glove. Yeah, you know, on. I mean, at first you 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 kind of get used to it, and then you realize they're not gonna they're not gonna attack you and kill attack you, you <laughs> kill you, or choke you, or bite you, which is one of the main reasons why yeah. these guys are great. And they they don't carry disease, and we'll talk about that in a little while. And they also don't fly, right? Yeah. Oh, they don't yeah. fly at you, yeah, and so like you know. In Texas, we have those nasty... Mm -hmm, the American cockroach. And they fly at you. <laughs> and they're very scary. And, and anyway, so that is what's, what I really love about these dubia roaches. But okay, did you want to go ahead and talk a little bit more about their life cycles? Yeah, so we're going to talk about... So the dubia roach is what they call ovoviviparous. What a fancy word. Ovoviviparous. It's like a mouthful. Can't say that. I can't even say yeah. that's why you're saying it. <laughs> so basically, what that means is that they don't lay eggs. Okay, but what they do is they develop their babies internally inside a long tube. And I actually got a lady here. We do. We that have has, a lady that's friend. carrying it. Uh, it's the long tube is called the Uatheca or Uatheca. Uatheca. That some people, some people that pronounce it differently. But she, I don't want to. I don't want to damage I'm, her. I'm scared for you to touch her because I don't want her to get stressed out. Yeah. So why maybe, don't we just hold her, okay, hold it up it. like this? Um, let me see if I can turn it around. But I'll show you another up close too. But she's this little friendly lady right here. Um, I don't know if you can probably really see. Uh, but I'll 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 videotape it so that we can just put that up right here yeah, as B roll. Okay, go ahead. Tell them about the Utheka, babe. So the Utheka is just a is just a, a tube, and a female carries that Utheka for about four weeks. Then, as the nymph activity increases, she will expel it. And when the babies are born, they're about one eighth of an inch. And aren't they like clear or white? Yeah, they're they're white. And you know, some people think that when they see a white roach, that they're like, "Ooh, look, it's a it's an albino roach." Well, it's not an albino roach. Mm -mm. It's just that the when they're first born, they're white. And also, we'll talk about their instars as they molt. Mm -hmm. They come out white and they, they turn gray with, with, with time. Mm -hmm. So one of the things that we really love uh, about the dubia roach is that their exoskeleton is not super hard, right? That's right. Like Madag uh, Madagascan, Madagascar, uh, Madagascar hissing, hissing roaches. roaches are really not good for feeders because their mm -hmm. exoskeleton is very hard and so they're harder to eat. And so for bearded dragons... Well, those, are, those are pets anyways. Those are pets. Yeah. He wants to get one yeah. of those. I'm like... Just take your time, dude. Like, we don't need to Come keep... Come on. I want... <laughs> he wants all kinds of stuff, you guys. All kinds of stuff. I'm like, let's let's go slowly. We just got <laughs> we just got discoys. We have dubia. And now we have millworms and superworms. And so I guess he's really working on me for this hissing. Yeah. And, and something about... Um, what, what was the other one you wanted? I want the, uh, the Halloween hisser. Oh. The Halloween hisser. And we all... Uh, uh, yeah, they're so kind so of. So, anyways, right now. Th those are more for like pets, and I heard they are great for your young kids if you have young kids, especially boys, you know, in that they elementary like elementary age kids. Um, but yeah, some of us ladies are like, no. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but they're growing on me. They're growing on me. So, okay, Gio, since you were just basically saying that when they molt, mm -hmm. they are white, right? That's right. So do you want to explain a little bit more about maybe the life cycle of the molting? And I think they're called instars, you guys. Yeah, that's right. So in the life cycle of a dubia, the, the a nymph will go through seven instars uh, until they mature to, to, to uh, adulthood. Uh, and the instar is basically the stage between each molt. Okay. So that's after each molt, that's when they, they're white. Mm -hmm. And after their exoskeleton hardens, they turn a little bit gray. Uh, this time they're super delicate, so guys, don't be reaching around and messing with them because they're very delicate. They basically have no exoskeleton, so they like don't pick them up and hold them, right? Because they're easily injured when they're white. Exactly, yeah, and and basically after each molt, uh, it'll increase their size by around twenty five percent. Now mm -hmm. this is just a general rule, so mm -hmm. not every roach is the same. Uh, there are mm -hmm. going to be some that are just much larger. Uh, we'll show you some examples of two different 
females, uh, you know, one's more mm -hmm. slender, one other one is a little more voluptuous. So they are not the same. This is a, these are just general sizes, mm -hmm. general rules uh, as they as yeah. increase in size. And there's just different genetics, just like with human beings. There's right. different genetics and genes. And, you know, if you get, say, a roach colony from us, and we do sell those online, we sell yep. roach colonies. So if you get a roach colony from us or a roach colony somewhere else, mm -hmm. you're going to see that your roaches look a little different. Yeah, that's and right. so it's actually a good thing to. Even in, even in, even their color is even, even slightly different. Even their color is different. Yeah. Since we're talking about our roach colonies, do you want to tell them what we offer usually yeah. and why we yeah, so, offer? So our, our roach colony, uh, it starts, at, we have different sized nips uh, and it basically you don't want to feed those off, regardless of who you get them from, you don't want to feed off your, your colony that you started. You want to just have that and let them reproduce, let that mm -hmm. colony get healthy and, and strong and, and just... Yeah, you don't want to feed off your, which if you're going to buy a colony, you're doing it for the sole purpose because you're tired of spending so much money. I don't know about you guys, but we were tired of going to our local pet stores mm -hmm. and spending a lot of money every month just to feed our bearded dragons. So it's we that's why we started our own colony and it's it's going to be great to do that and so that's why you want to make sure when you do get a colony whoever you choose to get one from that you still for a little bit buy some separate ones to feed to your feeders, yeah. feeders for your reptiles and you just let this colony just flourish over mm -hmm. several months several several months right. and so it and our ones that we give ugh, i don't want to I can't off the top of my head remember. I think it's a hundred roaches all together. Yeah, right. yeah. And how many males and females? We do a ratio of one male to four females. Right, so about 10%. Uh, we, we do, we'll do a, a custom size, but typically it's a hundred uh, mm -hmm. roaches. And 10% of those are ma adult males and females with, uh -huh. like she said, one, one five ratio. Mm -hmm. uh, and what, one thing she mentioned is that you don't want to feed off when you get your new colony, you don't want to feed them off because it takes these guys about five months. Yeah, five to, months from, from yeah. newborn nymph to right, right. to adulthood. Yeah, those instars, it takes that a newborn to adult about five months. So yeah, so yeah, that's why exactly what I'm saying that you don't want to feed off your your um, roach colony. But when you get one from us, you get about the ten percent being adults. And then all the rest is a mix, various sizes, and this is going to make a very healthy colony for you That's because right. you're going to have, let's say you'll get some, you'll get smalls, mediums, large, extra large. You'll get your ten percent of adults. Right. Well, you know what? In a month or so or two, your extra larges and largest will become adults, and they'll mm -hmm. get into that breeding stage themselves, and it will keep flourishing. And then there's already probably even some that are pregnant that you'll receive um, of the females. Right. They may be pregnant and be giving you babies right away. So anyways, I just wanted to mention that, that if you are interested in that, visit us over on our website, mightydubiafeeders.com. And if for some reason, um, sometimes we do put out of stock when we're just running a little low, but if, if you happen to run into out of stock, just send us an email, you guys, and inquire with us and we'll be happy to try to work out that with you as quickly and as fairly as possible.